speaking of fire, if you know the 90s Precision Power Art Series amplifiers and the beautiful art by Carolyn Hall Young, you know these things are fire. And the A Series were released around 1993. And these just moved on to the new heatsink design. And there were several different models available. I'll leave a link to this brochure below if you'd like to download it. The artist Carolyn Hall Young states, creative minds will always search for the next question and the next solution. Innovation is a result of a will to focus to consider the what ifs and to be ready to venture into previously unknown territory. We think the barriers between art and technology are only a matter of the medium chosen and creativity and leadership are worth the courage they take. This is the true meaning of state of the art, Carolyn Hall Young. She was an amazing person we lost way too young back in 2018. God rest her soul. Let's move back to 1993, the Car Audio and Electronics directory. We're gonna look for the PPI series, including the A300, which shows up for $499, which is equivalent to about 1,090 in 2024, adjusted for inflation. If we move forward to the June issue of 1993, we will see a posting of the new art series, the A404. They mention the new heatsink as well as the finless design and also the ability to add water cooling with this amplifier. That's right. You could pump water through the outside edges of the amplifier to help keep it cool. I'd love to see one of these. If anybody has one of these, please show me a picture. I'd love to see them. Now, I have shown several different art series in the past, including the A404, the A600, the A1200, but today we're going to take a look at the A300. This is kind of the lower end model, and we'll get to the specs here in a minute, but still beautiful design here with the white finish and the artwork by Carolyn Hall Young, which is just classic. The artwork is not only on top, but it's also on the side. It gives some features. It tells you the different options of the amplifier. Here on the one side, we can see the speaker plug on the left. That gives us plus and minus for left and right channels, as well as a turn on lead, which is in the center. We'll go ahead and pull that out so we can take a closer look at it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get out, but this is the old design from PPI. Ryan used the same thing and some other amps have used them over the years. We call these Weco plugs and yes, they're very small connections inside, which accept about 16 gauge wire at the most. Here you can see the different markings there at the bottom, which show you uh, which channel is which and positive and negative. In the middle, we have the gain control. We have the left and right RCA input, as well as a DIN connection. Those for accessories, for PPI accessories like equalizers, etc. We also have a low impedance light and a power LED light as well. The power LED is red. Not sure why they use red for turning on an amplifier. I never understood that preferred like green or something that meant good. On the opposite side, very simple, not a whole lot going on here. 30 amp fuse and then the power plug for plus and minus and some more art continued. It does show 1992 there. That's when Carolyn did the design work, but these amps were not released until 93. Here's the Weco style plug for power. This one only accepts about eight gauge wire. And there you can see it, it does have screws on the bottom to uh, tighten up so you can tighten up each of the wires inside. Again, these are not my favorite style connectors. Some people like them, but I do not. Anyway, let's move on to the specs of this amplifier. The A300, 75 watts times two at four ohms, 150 times two at two ohms, or 300 bridged at four ohms. Dimensions 10.6 inches by 9.2 inches by two inches. Millimeter equivalents are there as well. Next up, we'll power up the amp and we'll try it with some speakers to see how it sounds. You can see the about one amp for idle current.
Sound quality was great with these PPI amps as kind of expected. Now let's hook it up to the amp dyno so we can check the power output on the left. In the middle, we'll show you the ohm load. On the right, we'll have the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the clamp so we can calculate the amplifier's efficiency. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. First up, we'll try the two channel test. That's right, hooking up in stereo to the amp dyno. Have all channels hooked up as you can see here on the power plug. At four ohms, it's rated 75 watts by two. We're gonna run these tests at one kilohertz. Certified test takes us up to 1% distortion. And here we go. And check this out. Right at 75 watts per channel at 12.99 volts. This amplifier has a regulated power supply and is said to do the output power anywhere from 11 volts all the way up to 15. So we're providing it kind of right in the middle. Dynamically, not much extra. Again, these regulated amps do not allow that. Two ohm stereo is rated 150 by two. Again, we're doing the one kilohertz track. And let's see if we can get that 150 up to 1% distortion. And not quite. 134 and 130 at 12.79. Let's reset it here for the dynamic test, see if we can get that 150. And no, not quite there, my friends. Only about 11 watts or so off, but we did not make it. This is not unheard of for the PPI amps. Now let's try it bridge mono, and we'll show the left positive and right negative is the way to bridge these amplifiers, as you can see here. We'll go ahead and make sure it's on, and then we'll hook it up to the amp dyno and let's do these uh, tests. We're gonna do this test at one kilohertz. I will test it later in the video at 40 hertz. Here we go, certified, up to 1% distortion. A little over 12 volts, can we get 300? Nope, 277 at 12.83. Now we'll reset the dyno here for the dynamic test. We're getting close, but yeah, just ever so slightly overrated. 287 at 12.87. Here visually we can see all the results we showed plus the 8 ohm stereo test which we did not show as well as the efficiencies. You're welcome to pause this if you'd like to see those up close. And for bridging we also showed the 8 ohm test here or at least the results. We did not show the test in the video. Again pause it if you'd like to see it. People do ask some time about turn on and turn off thumps. There was no turn on or turn off thump with this amplifier. Now let's take the four screws out of the bottom. These are long screws and you'll see why once we take the bottom plate off, pull it up. This bottom plate actually holds down the transistors and keeps them cool and it was very dirty. So we had to get out our uh, glass cleaner here and a uh, paper towel and go ahead and clean it up so we don't want to put back together a dirty amplifier. So let's get that cleaned up and shiny and see the reflection of Big D's bald head. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Here is the amplifier classic PPI 1990s class AB design. We can see the Nichicon caps here, 50 volt, 1000 microfarad for the rails as well as the power supply filtering. It's not sure if those have been changed. I don't think they have because I think um, this one is pretty stock, but it is possible that some things have been changed out. Here on the power supply, we have the RFP25N05s. These are MOSFETs for the power supply. And then we have the BDT81s and BDT82s here for the outputs. These are PMP and NPN transistors. Now let's move on to the pros and cons, things I like, things that could be better. First up, the good stuff, the looks of this thing, obviously, and the artwork is beautiful, thanks to Carolyn Hall Young. Class AB design for great sound quality. It is straight sound quality. There is no crossovers built in, just a game block taking your signal in and giving an amplifier of that signal. It is rare and unique by this time, especially one in good shape. Things to consider it is slightly overrated at two ohms, stereo and four ohms mono. There is no crossover, so you will need an external one. The speaker and power plugs are not my favorite. I have talked about these before. Two ohm stereo, four ohm mono come a little bit shy on the results. And it is 20 plus years old, so if you're gonna use an app like this, make sure you have it serviced so that it'll live on for many years to come. Speaking of living on here, the art series were shown in this Accord at the Sundown Show at the Down for Sound booth. These things just beautiful powering some mids and highs. 
in the system. Again, proof these 20 year old amps are still loved. People want to see them and yeah, they can pump out some beautiful sounds for your system. And this one was thumping definitely on the sub side, had more power, but yeah, mids and highs, usually a classic amp like this PPI. I do have people sometimes ask, why do I show videos like this of amplifiers that don't put out a whole lot of power? And it's really nostalgia. And it's really just to show that you can have an amplifier that doesn't have a ton of power and still sounds amazing and gets as loud as you really need to get. You don't have to have 10,000 watts to have a good sound system. So there you have it, the Precision Power A300. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure you smash the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Big D. I'm out of here. Well, not quite out of here yet. Let's try this certified mono test at 40 hertz for the PPI A300 and see what we get. And 236 at 12.68, so a little bit less than the one kilohertz run. And we're also gonna try it at four ohms bridge mono, one kilohertz with more voltage to see if that helps, see if we can get that 300 watts. And unfortunately, nope, this amp is highly regulated, still 275 at 13.9 volts. So you're not gonna quite get there, but you'd never know the difference between 275 and 300. Thanks again for watching. Y'all leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about these art series amps. I'll have more old school stuff coming. Till next time, Big D, I'm out.